So I just wanted to show you guys if you use inventory management. These are those two links that we were just in. This takes you to venture analysis, and this takes you to that packing list link that I just went to. So you don't actually, if you're in, if you're in venture analysis, it's great, but if you just wanted to get to see what your transfers were, your adjustments, and all that kind of stuff, from inventory management, you can just click, and it takes you right to where, where we just were. So just a little shortcut in the case you guys wanted. To show you guys quickly what I was talking about in costs, if you come up to costs, accounting administration, you have your cost type code of maintenance. You can look here and just look at your costs and you're able to see if it's inventoryable, yes or no. Um, if you needed to change it when you edit it, you can just change it from with the radio button. So, but that's where you would change it if you need to. Usually it's a discussion we have when you're setting up your cost, so most of you probably are pretty set. But if you were to add a new cost, um, definitely something you want to think about. Okay. Let's see. Now I was going to say one thing you should do with the cost entry detail report. Do you have that? So that I just closed. Um, that's just one thing actually. If you have alerts that pop up, that little screen that pops up, if you use them, it's great. You know, you, we are able to tell you what alerts that, or you guys can tell us what alerts you want, and that screen it pops up in the user space when they send it. If you don't use it and it does pop up and you just kind of close it every time, you can let us know because we can turn the alerts off from popping up there. And then that pop up won't happen anymore. Actually, uh, that's. I do want to talk about, we're going to talk about that a little bit more because there's, there's, there's a lot more that can happen with that. It's, it's one of the significantly underutilized uh, areas of the system and it can be obviously a nuisance like it is I mean, to us because for when we log in at Visco, um, we always get it no matter what. Um, we need to change that, but that should be talking about but, uh, but for the users, we definitely can turn that off, but in instances where, where, where you do want to see it, that secondary pop-up that, that, that Always, uh, the theory at least, again, we'll get into a bit more detail. The theory on that is that you've got in the background a sort of dashboard that's giving you uh, a summary of the most important alerts and or reports in a graphical format. I'll get into it. The cost entry detail report. Um, I think actually most of you have this. Or some slight variation of it, I should say. Here we go. And some of you actually probably have some filters on and such. But basically, this is a way for you to see any costs that you've entered. Um, most of you have a filter, so you're able to see you know, based on date posted. You know, we want to see what you posted last week or something to that effect. Or see all costs posted against a specific venture or for a specific cost type or vendor, things like that. Um, you have the ability to run this and if you're able to look up your costs rather than digging into venture analysis, you can do it this way. Um, for a lot of you, because you distribute your invoices against a lot of ventures, it's hard to go into venture analysis when you're looking for something specific. So you would be able to run this by the vendor invoice number and see where it all went. So that would be this. So this basically has your venture, the vendor, your product, the internal voucher number, the invoice date is your transaction date versus the date posted, which of course could always be different. Who posted it, your cost, reference the amount, if it was a quantity, and your foreign amounts. So it's a pretty, pretty straightforward, but if you're looking for something, it certainly does help. 
Some some people have this, and it's just a different name. I think it might be most most of your transactions, or most of you have it. Just a slight variation on the name. Okay. So the other thing I just kind of wanted to show you guys, which honestly for for some of you. is in Visco, and this is one of the common things actually, uh, Carla, I think Sasha emailed about this the other day, um, is how we inherit properties from one field to another throughout the system. So when you create a sale, where it goes, things like that, the fields that go from one screen to the next screen, etc. But one of the common things that we get is my invoice description is blank. So document-wise, I'm sure you all know that we can code it to pull from wherever. So for some of you document-wise, this isn't an issue. Sometimes it is. Um, sometimes when it comes to posting to QuickBooks, this is the value that goes over. Again, something Andy will talk about later, the differences. But sometimes this is the value that posts to QuickBooks. So if it's blank, it's like you don't want a blank value in the QuickBooks. So I want to show you kind of where this comes from. Um, in this case, the nice thing about here is if it's a pending invoice, you can just type it here. So you really don't have to you know, jump through hoops or do anything crazy. You can just type it here. This one's posted, of course, on can, but um, I just wanted to show you where it comes from. So we're going to look up here at this sales order number. Because basically, we take that field from the sales order shipment level. So we're going to go back to the sales order look at the sales or shipment level. So this was sales order 157 and it was shipment number 4. So if I come into shipment number 4 and you look under general information, you can see here the customer product name here is blank. So this is technically the reason why the invoice line is blank is because this is blank. But why is this blank? Well, this field comes from the line. So if we go back to the line, under general information and scroll down, you say, oh, well, it's blank here. Well, where does this come from? This comes from the product. So this is how it happens. You have the product with the default name. You create a sale. That's what's used. But if there is an association here, it takes what's in this field here. So it takes this value and rides it to the sales order line. And then the shipments inherit that property. They inherit that name. Unless you go into the shipment itself and maybe you change it. It takes it from one. And that field rides all the way to the invoice. So that's true on the purchase order side when it comes to vendor associations, but you don't have invoices really to, to worry about. So this is one of the, the common places is that um, if this is blank, it's going to be blank all the way through. So if you know those find you is still on the right side, then the default into your If it's blank here, it's going to be blank there unless you changed it literally on the order. So if you came in here right now and actually edited, edited this and put a customer product name in here and hit update, we will not change any sale. We don't update your history. So if you change it here, which you should, your new orders will be fine. 
but anything existing would still be showing blank. So actually, if you realize that this is a problem, we can help you with it as well. But for you guys, you have a little bit of a different setup when it comes to your customer product. Name. So you're an exception to this rule, technically. Okay, let me ask you this question, just hypothetically. Did you know you do key entry, screw up, whatever? How do you do a report? Like maybe that's going to be a talk about during our hour session to check this stuff, you know? To double check yourself to make sure, hey, everything's good, so I'm going to pay myself a little bit or whatever. It's all going to carry through. Well, for you guys, your sales orders and your invoices pull, um, you have a custom way of pulling, so your documents actually come out differently because you use this field in a different way. I forget the okay. specific. Can I chime in? Yeah. I was just talking with Yan yesterday about perhaps scaling scaling some of that those custom elements back to use the system in the way it's designed, like Aaron's described here, in which case I think a report where we said, here's the product name, here's all, here's the customer it's associated with, here's the customer product name, here's a uh, sales order, that, here's every sales order for that customer, and you know, here's the differences in the names of those three spaces, and how, you know, and sort of tracing that through a little bit of a history in our report would make a lot of sense and be pretty easy to do. Because, but I'm just saying, but just, just as key entry, you stuff in sort of customer product before it is, yeah. before it's So the next piece I kind of wanted to show you is actually kind of a little fun stuff. It's kind of going to be, unfortunately, a little bit of a review on sales order updates and inputs. But I wanted to talk to you guys about shortcuts, automation, things that we can do. I have a couple. We have a couple new little features that most of you have seen, um, and some other things that we can do. But it kind of ties into. You know, you guys have so many things going on, and we can make so many things easier for you so that you don't have to enter everything manually anymore. There's so many shortcuts, so many things on the back end. So I kind of wanted to talk about that. We do a lot of cool things for a lot of people. And um, actually, I was talking with Mary this morning. For, for those of you who have been with Visco for a while, and you know, your install, I don't want to say it's older because you're current, but um, a lot of the things have changed, and so you're able to do different things now. Um, so if you're going through a new implementation, you know, you're getting all of the, you know, different things I've learned and we've learned over the six years and all of the new changes where if you've been using the system for how many years, and you're just set in your ways and used to doing things a certain way, but we could probably shortcut half of that now, you know, make life easier. 